Yo! Gah. The king. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com and welcome back to another episode of What's In My Soccer Bag, this time for the month of October 2017. Of course, a series where I highlight all of the best products that I found myself using throughout the previous month, including apparel, footwear, equipment, even the bag itself. And of course, all of the items that you see in today's video, you can purchase for yourself by either clicking the little pop-up in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website, where you'll find everything listed in the form of individual Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to get all of these items below their normal retail price. So if you see something in the video you want, first link down below. Also, if you guys enjoy the What's In My Soccer Bag series and want to continue seeing it happen on a monthly basis, don't forget to support this video with a like. Starting off with the bag, I have this. This is the Chapter 5 CR7 Cheyenne backpack with a retail price of $85. So it is not a cheap bag by any means, but it's very good quality and it looks really, really cool. That's the main reason why I got it. You can see it does have the CR7 branding there to match what you would actually find on the Chapter 5 shoe. The bag itself is kind of like this blue tinted white color. It's really, really light. So obviously if you are gonna use this at the field regularly, you wanna be careful about tossing it around because it will get stained pretty easily. And at that point it would be pretty much impossible to fix it, but it still looks really cool and I think it's worth it. Even if you're just buying this as a school bag, obviously it's a regular backpack with the extra padding there on the back as well as on the straps themselves, all fully adjustable. It does have this big pocket right here on the front where you can fit smaller items, but it's large enough to fit bigger stuff as well. It's got a shoe compartment on the bottom, which I will unzip for you so you can see. That's really nice and it's obviously got that kind of more weatherproof, waterproof type material on the inside. So if your cleats are wet, it's not gonna make everything else inside the backpack all wet as well. And then obviously the main compartment here at the front, it's got CR7 signature on the underside is really cool. You got this little kind of pocket on the backside of the front of the backpack as well. Then it's got a little bit of a padded compartment there where you could fit a laptop or something else if you are using it for school. And it's just a large central compartment in general. So overall, if you have $85 to spend and you're a big CR7 fan, I think this is definitely one of those backpacks that you may want to consider. Also, these tend to sell out pretty quickly. So if you want one, get one while they're available. Before we move on, I need to show you something. Maybe this is coincidence, but here's this backpack, obviously the CR7 backpack. It's got the clasp in the middle to kind of hold the two straps together. If you undo this clasp and look at the shape of this particular piece, look at that. What does that remind you of? Because when I saw this, and again, I just, I'm, I'm noticing this as I'm making the video, it totally looks like Messi's signature logo. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of a conspiracy theory, but I just thought that was really, really strange. For compression shorts, I actually tried out something new this month and I really, really like them. This is the Storelli Anti-Abrasion Body Shield Compression Shorts with a retail price of $50 US. I have them here in black and yellow. You can get them in white as well. And honestly, guys, this is one of the nicest compression shorts that I've ever worn. They're not too far off from the usual body shield ones that I show you guys with the extra pour on padding down the side. What makes these different is obviously they're a little bit slimmer because they don't have the extra padding. Instead, it has this anti-abrasion material running down the side of your leg and kind of covering I guess the side of your butt for lack of a better term. And if you're sliding on artificial grass or any kind of really hard surface, you know that that can absolutely tear up your skin. So something like this will definitely help to prevent that. That's what it's designed for. And again, the quality is just fantastic. I would go as far as to say that the quality of these compression shorts is better than what you're gonna get from Nike and Adidas. They look really cool. They're super comfortable to wear. And you get that little bit of extra protection with literally no extra bulk that you can see or feel. So for me, these are absolutely fantastic if you're on the market for some good quality compression shorts. 
For a training top, I went with this. This is the Nike third PSG training jersey for the 17-18 season. It's crazy that these teams have home, away, and third training jerseys, not just regular jerseys, but they do. Retail on this guy is 60 bucks, and I thought this was a really cool training jersey, particularly in the PSG variation, because you can get this for all the Nike teams, just because this was a more simple colorway, sticking to just black and white, with this very kind of retro theme on the front. I, I like this pattern. It kind of reminds me of like old wallpaper or something like that, but it looks cool on a jersey. You get the PSG logo and the Nike swoosh there on the front, a white stripe going down both sleeves, a little bit of a white trim around the back of the collar. The back is left completely black and the quality of the material is great. It's their dry fit uh, material, very durable, looks the part, super comfortable to wear. Obviously it fits really nicely as well and it is inexpensive in comparison to the actual jersey, but basically made from the exact same material and the same cut overall. So if you're looking for a really good training jersey, good quality, or you just like the look of it, this is one that I can strongly recommend. I actually picked a second training top this month, mainly because I really like this one as well. And it is a more inexpensive option, this one being from Adidas. It is the Adidas Tango Cage Jersey with a retail price of $45. Now this is not necessarily new. This is just the latest color scheme, which is like this army green, olive green color, which I really, really like. I love the old school pattern on there. So in that regard, it is somewhat similar to the Nike shirt I just showed you, although it's on the front and back on this particular shirt. But I love the blanked out logos and sponsor on the front. To me, that is just such a cool detail. The logo on the side, the sponsor in the middle, they're just kind of green rectangles and a circle. I love that. And then the bright orange Adidas logo for your branding. And then it even has the Tango logo at the bottom of the shirt as well. Adidas has done a killer job with this whole Tango lineup. It's well-priced, the quality of material is great. They all fit really nice. And it's just such cool styling. It's retro, but also modern in terms of the fit. And for 45 bucks, I just think this is a really, really cool piece of apparel. You can wear it for training. You can wear it casually as well. Just really nice. I'm sorry to do this, but I'm sure most of you don't mind. I picked a third training jersey, and that is this. It's more of a t-shirt than a jersey. It is the Chapter 5 CR7 Long Sleeve Tee. Retail is $40, which isn't super cheap, but it's CR7 branded, so you can expect the price always to be a little bit steeper. This one is white. It's available in black as well. That'll all be linked on the What's In My Soccer Bag page, but it's pretty cool because it does have the matching logo to what you'd find on the CR7 Chapter 5 Mercurials. And then the back, as you can see, has the CR7 logo, his signature, and then this number seven with kind of like a rainbow effect to it. And you also see on the one sleeve, no, it's on the other sleeve, sorry. On this sleeve, it's got a Nike swoosh going down the side as well in that same kind of rainbow effect that you'd actually find on the shoe, which I think is a cool little extra detail. It's made from their Nike T material, which is with a branding that you see right here. It's got a nice stretch to it. It's very thin, super, super soft, and very comfortable to wear. So for training, if it's a little bit of a cooler day and you just want kind of a base layer, fully long sleeve as well. This is definitely one of those training tops, especially if you're a CR7 fan, that you may want to look into. Again, these tend to sell out pretty quickly, so don't wait too long if you're planning on picking one of these up. For shorts, I went with these, which are the new Adidas Real Madrid Champions League training shorts. Retail is about 40 bucks on these guys. And again, I picked them for a couple different reasons. One being the fact that I love the waistband that it has. This is something that just tends to be very durable and I like the way it looks in general. It's got the Champions League logo there on the back, kind of like the higher up right side of your butt. Uh, you've got the Real Madrid logo on the one side, the Adidas branding on the other side. They have pockets, which is really, really nice. Most training shorts or soccer shorts in general won't have the pockets. That's just nice to have if you want to wear the shorts casually. And my favorite part is the material. It's made from this super thin, really interesting material. It's got a little bit of texture on the inside. Very lightweight, very comfortable to play in, especially if it's a little bit warmer. And it's a cool color in general, kind of this like dark bluish green color. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but for $40, obviously not very cheap, but some very high quality shorts. Sup? This next item I bought more so to display in my office rather than to actually wear because I honestly don't think I could pull this off. It is the Adidas Originals Manchester United training jacket. So part of the Originals line, not necessarily performance apparel, it's more so for style. If this is anyone's style, I don't really know. And I, I figured I'd ask you guys a question, answer it as honestly as you possibly can down below in the comments. Is this something that you would seriously wear to look cool? 
Because I, I just don't see too many people in this day and age answering that question with a yes, but maybe I'm wrong. For me, I think it's a cool jacket. I want to own it. I want to hang it up in my office because I love the retro vibe of it. I'm not sure if this is a remake of an original Manchester United training jacket that they used to have. If you know that info, let me know down below in the comments as well. But to actually wear this in public seriously, Nah, this is like a Halloween costume or something for me, but really cool. I love the blue pattern on there. It's just so wild. You got the red accents with the pinstriping. It's even got the old school kind of felt logos with the Adidas branding right there and the Manchester United crest, which is also kind of an older style crest. The white collar, zipper, and the little trim pieces at the bottom and the ends of the sleeves. It's just really, really vibrant. Just too much for my personal style, but definitely something that you guys will see in future videos hanging up in my office. Because it's interesting and for 80 bucks, I guess it's not too over the top expensive, but I I'm just not sure who would actually buy this to wear it seriously. Now a jacket that I would and have actually worn is this right here. This is the Adidas Tango Coach Jacket with a retail price of $65, which is actually fairly reasonable. Part of that same colorway release as the training jersey that I showed you, also part of the Tango line. So it's got this kind of army green color to it with the bright orange accent, mainly just in the form of the Adidas logo on the front. That's really the only splash of orange you'll find, except for the lining on the inside, which you wouldn't really see unless you unbutton the jacket. The jacket itself is all buttons. There's no actual zipper, which kind of gives it its own unique look, especially when it is fully unbuttoned. And it eliminates a lot of extra bulk to the jacket itself. It's nice to wear. It's more of a windbreaker style, not super water resistant. No hood either. It's just got this collar, which I think looks really, really clean. It's got the gloss Tango logo there on the back, which I think is a cool little extra detail. And then it does have the strings at the bottom that kind of hang down a little bit so you can tighten the bottom part as well. Overall, really cool jacket. Pockets on the front as well. Not sure if I mentioned that. But for 65 bucks, I really, really like the look and feel of this. For pants, I pick these. This is the Adidas Tango Tiro 17 pants. So not too far off from the regular Adidas Tiro pants, even pretty much the same retail price. These guys go for $50 US, but it's part of the Tango line. So it has a little bit of extra detailing with the Tango logo on the one side, and then of course the Adidas logo on the other. The stripes basically go to the side of your knee, and then at the very back of the knee, you're gonna find that it has this extra kind of vented mesh material, and then a white pinstripe, just to add a little bit of extra detail to what would otherwise be just plain black and white stripes going down the side of a pair of Tiro pants. It's tapered at the bottom, so obviously soccer specific. You have the zipper as well, which is really, really nice. It's got a slightly different material at the bottom of uh, the back of the leg as well, kind of an elasticated material, which I actually do prefer. There's some venting here at the back of the bottom of the waistband, the butt area. Again, third butt reference of the video. And again, for $50, they're really solid. It obviously does have the zipper pockets as well, so you can wear them casually. These are very popular for casual wear, super comfortable, and for training in general, the Adidas Tiro pants are absolutely fantastic. So for 50 bucks, especially if you're looking for something a little bit different, the Tango variation is definitely worth a look. Socks, they're really important. I have some pretty cool ones this month. This is the CR7 Chapter 5 branded Nike Nike Grip socks, which surprisingly don't have a premium on the price. They retail for the regular $28, but they're really cool and I guess just more so unique in comparison to regular Nike Grip socks. So you'll see the Nike swoosh on the front has this multicolor effect to it, and then going down the crew length kind of calf part of the sock, it's got little, the, the diamond cutouts, the shards that kind of match the design on the cleats. You can see on the very back going up the back of the heel, it's got multicolor stripes as well. And even on the underside of this bit right here, oh my gosh, I'm wearing two pairs of socks on my hands, hard to do. You can see the CR7 branding there in multicolor as well. And then of course the Nike Grip socks. So what makes them special is this material right here, all the gray part. That's basically like a grippy type material. It has a slight rubbery sensation to it. And it's there to eliminate slippage on the inside of your shoes. It's quite effective. It's not a huge difference in comparison to regular socks, but it's a small enough difference to where I definitely do think it's worth a little bit of extra money to buy the Nike Grip Socks. These are personally my favorite Grip Socks at the moment. I like them a little bit more than True Socks just because they feel more like normal socks than True Socks do. It's not to say that they're a bad product, but for me, Nike Grip Socks are really, really good. And again, if you're a fan of CR7 or you just want a particularly cool pair of socks, because you can get away with wearing these with pretty much anything. They're kind of like a blue tint color, but 
pretty much look white from a distance. These are definitely worth a look. And again, it's CR7 branded, so it will sell out quickly, especially at the $28 retail price. If you hate taping up your shin guards, this is what you need. These are the Storelli Body Shield Leg Sleeves, a product that retails for $30, but with an SR4U coupon code, you can get them for even less than that. And this is a product that I honestly use every single time that I play with shin guards. What's great about it is it's obviously a shin guard sleeve made from a nice elasticated material, very, very durable. The top and bottom rim of the elasticated sleeve obviously has these little silicone grips, so that helps to hold the sleeve in place without being uncomfortable or anything like that. So that's a really nice feature of this particular sleeve. Plus, it's got a built-in pocket on the front so you can slide your shin guards in. They sit against the sleeves rather than directly against your leg, which can be a little bit more comfortable for some people. And because of the design, there's no bottom to the pocket. So the sleeves can't fall all the way through like they normally would on a regular pair of sleeves. Plus, you get the added pour on foam down the outside of your calf, covering an area that wouldn't normally be protective. And this is a padding that you don't feel or see when you're actually wearing these sleeves but you definitely do notice it when you take a shot to the back of the leg when someone cleats you so overall really really good shin guard sleeves and they eliminate the need for tape which is a really big thing for me hold the shin guards in place really effectively they don't move around while you're playing and it's just a really solid product for 30 bucks it's gonna last you a long time and you definitely can't go wrong for shin guards, I continue to use these. These are third generation C6 Agility carbon fiber shin guards. With an SR4U coupon, you can get them for about 135 bucks. So they are very, very pricey, but they're essentially the last pair of shin guards that you'll ever need to buy, as long as you can deal with not losing them. Because I know some people lose shin guards all the time. If you're one of those people, these are not for you. Anyways, what's so great about these shin guards is the fact that it's pretty much the best in every measurable category of a shin guard. If you value protection, this is the hardest carbon fiber, the hardest shell on the market. Aerospace grade carbon fiber, no fillers whatsoever. And it's paper thin. It's actually remarkable that these are as solid as they are given how paper thin they are. The liner is about three times as thick as the actual shell. The liner itself is made from a pour-on material. It's got this nice texturing on there that dries pretty much instantly. They don't absorb any water. They're extremely lightweight. They fit super well. This is the speed variation. They also make the max variation, which is basically just the size of the shin guard. So if you want more or less coverage, depending on what your preference is, they make that an option to you. And again, it's just the best of the best. I've never tried anything else that even comes close. So again, if you don't lose your shin guards all the time and you can justify paying a large amount of money for a pair of shin guards you're gonna use for a very long time, these are the ones that I would buy. For ball, I went with this. This is the new high-vis color of the Nike Ordem 5. Same match ball we got from Nike at the start of the year, but obviously in the new updated color scheme that we always get mid-season for the harsher winter weather. So a yellow base with the purple and orange accents. Really, really cool look on this particular design, I would say. And obviously it's expensive. It's an official match ball with a $160 retail price. Definitely not for everybody, but if you want the same balls that the pros are using on TV, this is the one to get. I think it's a really solid performer. The one thing about the Ordem 5 I will say is they tend to take a little bit to break in because the first time that you use one of these with proper air pressure, it will have a very firm sensation to it, which I personally don't mind, but a lot of people don't necessarily like how that feels. That will change a little bit after a few playing sessions. It'll soften up a little bit and feel a lot more normal. But from a performance and durability standpoint, the Ordem 5 is quite simply one of the best balls out there. And I would very, very strongly recommend it. For comfort reasons when it comes to footwear, I've been using these. These are Corexel Active Pro insoles with a retail price of $50 US. And this is a product that I've been using pretty much ever since I first brought it in to do a review on. Not really expecting too much out of them because they are quite pricey at $50 US, but honestly, I think they're well worth it, especially if you struggle with a lack of arch support in your shoes or just general discomfort because of the cheap insoles that pretty much every single soccer cleat comes with. I'm personally a little bit flat-footed and I've been struggling with plantar fasciitis as of late, and this is something that helps me out tremendously. My shoes feel way more comfortable when 
I have these in. The arch support that you get from this element is so much better than the stock insoles, which essentially provide nothing at all. But this particular material, it's specially designed for soccer cleats. So it's very flexible, super thin, very low profile. So unlike pretty much any other orthotic insole I've tried in a soccer cleat, these fit properly. They eliminate that little bit of extra dead space without lifting your heel too high to where it throws off the fit of the shoe or lifting the midfoot too high to where your shoes feel too small because you got these really big bulky insoles. And what's cool about these as well, I have the low variation because I have a fairly low arch. They also make a medium and high variation so you can match the insoles specific to your foot type in order to get the best possible fit. So correct sole insoles, I would strongly recommend them. And if you want a little bit more info on them, I'll leave a pop-up on screen to my review where I go over all the details you need to know. When it comes to footwear, we're actually gonna start off with a pair of sneakers that I wouldn't usually feature in this series, but I really, really like these. It is the Adidas EQT Support 9317. This is a sneaker that Adidas sent me a few weeks ago, and I have to say it far exceeded my expectations. I've really wanted a pair of these ever since they first came out, just because I thought it was a cool looking shoe in general. The upper is great and all, but this boost midsole is incredible. Incredible. It's the thickest boost I think you can get from any Adidas model period. And this is really just intended for casual wear. It's not a real running shoe, or at least I wouldn't personally run in them. But the amount of cushioning you get from this level of boost underneath your foot is tremendous. This is probably the most comfortable sneaker that I've honestly ever worn. I can't take them off my feet and I'm definitely gonna be looking to get another pair. So these are actually readily available now. They're not selling out every single time they release, like when they first came out. You can get them in a couple different colorways that are actually really clean, like this one. So again, if you're interested in a pair, it'll be on that page, as many colors as I can find. And again, just a super, super comfortable and very good looking pair of sneakers as well. I played a little bit of indoor soccer this last month. So when I did that, my go-to was this guy right here, the Puma 365 Ignite Net Fit Indoors. Retail is $100, you can get them on sale for a little bit under 70, so it's relatively affordable. Two different colorways available, the bright orange that I have right here, which I know is not for everybody, but if you do like bright stuff, there's a lot to like about this colorway. And the other colorway available is solid black. So if you like something more low profile, which I personally do, I'm probably gonna pick up a pair of those. Uh, those are available as well, so keep that in mind. And what's so cool about this indoor shoe is the net fit system. You can see the branding right there. And basically within any of these cutouts of this net, you can put the laces. So you basically create your own lacing system. And really the variation, depending on how you lace up the shoe, really does change the way that they fit and feel on feet. It allows for a level of adjustability that I've never really experienced on a soccer shoe in general. This is kind of my ideal setup if you're wondering what this whole lacing system is. But again, you can do it however you want, custom to your foot, with the shoes on your feet, and just play around to see what works best for you specifically. The rest of the shoe is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much a solid mesh, very thin upper. So it has that sock-like sensation on foot, more of a barefoot feel in general, minimal padding under foot and a fairly decent outsole that provides decent traction as long as the court isn't overly dusty but that's kind of the case with most indoor shoes so overall i really like these if you want more details on this shoe in particular and the net fit system i'll leave a pop up on screen to my review that went up not too long ago but overall i would very very strongly recommend these i just wanted to give an honorable mention and this is not a joke to the Skechers Galaxy. This is a shoe that I brought in with the expectation that they were gonna be terrible. Skechers is a brand with a horrible reputation. They're being sued by everybody. They copy everybody. And they didn't really copy anybody with this particular shoe. That's not why I brought them in. I brought them in because they were on sale for $45 and I wanted to see how they would be, again, with the assumption that they would be terrible, but they ended up being actually really solid. So solid that I would say that these are actually better quality than a lot of $80 takedown models you'd find from big brands like Nike and Adidas, who are obviously a lot more reputable in the soccer cleat world. So, Skechers Galaxy for $45, you don't have to get it in this colorway. A little bit embarrassing to wear, but if you can deal with that, it's a really solid value. If you wanna learn more about these, because again, I was really surprised by them, check out my review, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen. The last pair I have to show you, which is the pair that I wore when I did play outside, was the Nike Tiempo Legend 7, which is my personal favorite shoe at the moment. This has been featured in a few What's In My Soccer Bag videos, but my reasoning for this particular pick is mainly due to the colder weather in general. I've learned over the years 
to really listen to myself in regards to what my preferences truly are. As much as I like wearing shoes like a Nike Mercurial Vapor 11, when it's really cold outside, I've definitely noticed that tighter fitting and thinner shoes are far more uncomfortable for me personally. You might be a little bit different, but when it's a little bit cold outside, leather, not necessarily fitting as tight or at least not squeezing your foot and really just having a softer feel to it not only is more comfortable for me but it tends to keep my feet a little bit warmer so that's kind of the reasoning and justification for me picking a leather shoe during the colder months in general obviously when i'm testing stuff out that changes things a little bit but there wasn't too much new in the month of october so because i wasn't testing anything i went with my personal favorite the nike tempo legend 7. Anyways, guys, that is it for this month's What's in My Soccer Bag. Again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. And also, if you're interested in anything that you saw in today's video, again, you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes for every single item that you saw in today's video. Any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. All my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.